Welcome back. We are on lesson 16 for pre-calculus. We're doing quadratic models today. We're going to classify scatter plots, use scatter plots and a graphing utility to find a quadratic models. Choose a model that best, fit, best fits the data. Why should we learn this? Because many real life situations can be modeled by quadratic equations. Um, they have a story problem in the book about monthly preci precipitation for San Francisco, California. We are going to make one ourselves right here. It says the table shows estimated average number of hours that adults in the United States spent reading newspapers each year from 2003 to 2012. So we're going to make a scatter plot of this. We're going to plot this. We're going to call this the one on the left is always the X column. The one on the right, just call it Y. In our calculator, we're going to make this list 1 and the y's list 2. So taking a look here at the actual question on the next page, it says, use a graphing utility to create a scatter plot of the data. Let t represent the year and with t equal to 3 corresponding to 2003. So instead of putting 2003 in your calculator, we're just going to enter the number 3. It'll make it a lot easier to make a scatter plot because you, will, you won't have to make that big a window for it. You won't have to do a window from the year 2003 through the number 2012. Those would be really big numbers. So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All right, so the numbers here for the x's go between 0, would say, and maybe 15. We'll count by 1s. The Y's are going from 150, so let's start that maybe at 140, and it's going through 200. And maybe I'd count, so this would be easy to count by ones on for the scale, for the tick marks. This one, the scale would probably be best to count by fives or tens. I'll just have it mark it off by tens. So again, the scale here is going to be from 0 to 15 because that's where the numbers are. This one's going to be between 140 and 200. All right, so what we want to do is, let me, well, I got them in there already. I'm going to enter them in there a second time. So where you want to go on your calculator to make a scatter plot, you want to go to the word stat on the second row down, push it. And then it's automatically where you need to go after you push it. So you're going to hit enter again. So you're going to hit enter at that point because what we're doing is we're entering um, number one, edit. We're entering the edit mode on it. And I have numbers in there already. It's actually the numbers we're plotting, but I'll put them back in there again with you. So if you want to clear it, what you do, you go up to the top of the column, hit enter. Well, you hit clear and then you go down and it gets rid of all of the numbers. So um, again, I'm going to stat, edit, hit enter. Then I'm going to enter all those numbers from 3 to 12. So you type the number, and then you hit enter. Then I use the arrow to go over a column to the Y. So I'm going to enter all those then. All right, and then to have your calculator draw the scatter plot, what you need to do is go to stat plot up here in the blue on the top. And to get to the blue, of course, you need to use the blue key, the blue second key. So go to second, stat plot, and that needs to be turned on. If it's not turned on, you just hit enter on it and hit on. I'll turn it, it if you just hit it so it highlights it. So on, and then second quit, and then let me hit clear on that. So you want stat plot here to be highlighted. If it's not highlighted, go up over top, hit enter on it. So that turns it on. All right, if I just hit graph right now, well, shoot, <laughs> you can see it because I already changed the window on it. If you didn't change the window, it wouldn't be there. So you have to go to window. And for my window, I said I want to do 0 to 15. 
for the x's and count by 1 for the scale. And then the y's, I want to go 140 to 200. And I wanted to count by 10's for the scale. And then hit graph, and there they are. All right. So on the next page, again, what I did on that, just one more time, is I hit stat, edit, and you hit enter all the numbers under list 1, enter all the x's, and then all the y's under list 2, then you go back to stat, calculate, and you choose choice, well, we're going to do that in a minute, I forgot. But then I went over and I turned stat plot on, right there, you need that on, and double check on y equals, above it here, plot 1 needs to be on, and I changed my window, under window, to all these new numbers so that I could see all the points. Okay, so they said to make a scatter plot, which we did, that was A. And then B, it says a cubic model for this data is 0.31 put 0.131 t to the third minus 2.81 t squared plus 12.1 t plus 183. And the r squared value is 0.9962. That means that that model is 99.6% close to being that exact, um, the numbers fit that, that close. So let's put it in our calculator. It says use it to graph the model with the scatter plot from A. Is the cubic model a good fit? And let me show you just real quick here. We could have found that ourselves. I'm surprised they didn't have us find it ourselves. Again, it's the cubic model. Here it is, cubic. Cubic means to the third power. So we could have found that. They didn't need to give it to us. So to stat, calculate, um, choice number six, cubic model, calculate, and there it is. And that gives you the value then for A, B, and C to put into the formula and for D. But they want us to graph theirs, so let's do that. So point one three one t to the third, you can just use x for that, and then minus 2.81 x squared, and then plus 12.1x plus 183. Graph. And you can see it looks pretty good. It goes through most of the points. Um, and I'm going to cheat and go ahead here. So that line gives you predicted numbers. And it says the company actually made projections about the average number of hours uh, the adult spent reading newspapers from 2013 to 2015. The company's projections are shown in the table. Use the models from B and C to predict the average number of hours for 2013 and 2015. All right, so this is the company's projections. This is what they're guessing that it's going to do for those years. So that extrapolates it outside of the data here. The data goes down through 2012, so we're going outside our numbers, so that's called extrapolating. And overall, you're not really supposed to do that. You can predict numbers within the model, but when you go outside the model, it's not as a good a fit usually. And honestly, you can kind of see here that it's not going to be a good fit with this model because you can see it goes down and it goes up, and I think we know the reading isn't going to go up. So it just kind of happened to fit them, but Overall, it's not going to be a good model in the long run because the, the amount of reading probably isn't going to go up. That would be surprising. So, so the projections here for the cubic model, so that would be model B. So what I want to, I want to do it now because it's in there right now. So if I go to second calculate the value for 2013. So hit value and I get 153. Point two, and then for 2014, so second calculate the value, put a 14 in, we get 161. I'm going to do it again, second calculate value, put the X in, 139, no, no, 15. So you could do this yourself by just plugging the number into the equation up here. What this is doing, it's saving us time. We're plugging in the number 13 up here, so we did .131 times 13 to the third minus 2.81 plus 
times 13 squared plus 12.1 times 13 plus 183. I think we both know there's no way we want to do that three times, plug that all in if we can avoid it, when the calculator will just do it for us, so it's done. All right, then what they do is they switch gears here and they say, um, so again, they want to know, is it a good model? Well, it's a good model for within the data, but like I said, it looks like it's not going to be a good model in the long run because it's going upward for no good reason, So, and the numbers aren't going up, so why would they just randomly jump up all of a sudden? So something's not working out well there. All right, we want to do it again, and this time find the quadratic model. So what we're going to do is go back to stat, calculate, and this time we want choice 5, quadratic model, hit calculate, and it gives us our A, B, C, and the R value. So I got for our quadratic model here, Y equals 0.136X squared plus negative 8.06x and then plus 224.2. Um, and the r squared value is 0.978. If you're not getting the r squared values on your calculator, what you got to do is you got to go to catalog, which is above the zero, you hit second, zero and it takes you to the catalog. And what you do is you scroll down till you get to the word diagnostics and you want to turn your di diagnostics on. So hit enter on diagnostics on and enter again and it says done and so they're on then. So when you go back to stat, calculate the um, quadratic model, go down and calculate and it will give you the R value if it didn't give it to you before. All right, so I'm going to put that in there for y equals now. So 0.136x squared minus 8.06x plus 224.2 graph. All right, so you can see that one's not bad, and it's kind of nice because it keeps going downward. So that's kind of probably a better model for it. Let me change my window a little bit. So I'm going to change my X to 20. And then for the Y, let's take it down a little lower, maybe to 110. And so I think that's probably a better model than the other one, even though the R value wasn't as good on this one as it was on the other one. I got This R value is actually smaller. It's 97.8% for the match. But we can see when we actually look at it and think about it, it doesn't matter because it's going down like the other one did in the same direction. So that's probably why it would be a better fit for it. That's what they asked on the next question, which model would it be a better fit? And so then going back down to F, it wants to know what kind of numbers did we get for that if we projected it ourselves here, the 2013, 14, 15. So using the model from C, so using C again, go to second calculate the value for 13, and I get 142. And let's see, second calculate the value um, for 2014. So the numbers are going down, which is good. At this other model, they went up, which just doesn't make sense. And last of all, 2015. Get 133.9. So why are, are our numbers different than their models? Um, I don't know. I don't know what they did for their projections. What? I mean, they're just guessing at it too. So our numbers, I don't know. They're a little bit different than theirs. It's hard to say without honestly knowing what they did. All right. I'll see you for the next lesson. And hi, Mary. If you're joined me here, Mary said that she was going to be watching this and I made this for her. All right. You have a good night.